Hello again. We are in the stock market talking about why defining your market is key. And we are diving into the concept. And yes, it's about the marketing concept, of course. Marketing is answering these questions here. Let me move here so that you can see the full slides. I hope this is possible. So here we are, we are talking about who are the existing customers, what are their needs currently and also in the future, and how can we help them satisfy those needs? What kind of products and services do we need and how do we talk to them? And how do we deliver that product uh, to the people who are looking for this product or service? And then, even if we have all the answers to that, why should these customers buy from exactly us? So that's the marketing concept. You are identifying and choosing the appropriate customers. Then you are positioning your offer. You are interacting and communicating with those customers. You are adapting, of, of course, um, your marketing effort and you are working on the performance on a continuous basis, leading these marketing efforts to people buying your product. And now I'm coming back to the definition that we had at the very first step. The marketing mix, the so-called marketing mix is about having the right product in the right place at the right time and at the right price. So let's dive into this concept. It's called the four Ps. And you have already um, listened to them just now. It's about the product, the promotion, the price, and the place. So what does that mean? What do is, is this concept of the four Ps? So first of all, it's of course the product. And we are coming from the stop idea. So we have at least a, a starting point of um, of the product, the definition of that product, that problem that we are solving. Now the promotion, the second P standing for promotion is how do we let uh, our future buyers, our collaborators, our co-creators know um, where they can buy the product and why they should do that. And of course the price should be just exactly right um, it should feel right for them to buy it at that price. And the fourth P is about placement, meaning about the place. So if you have a, a product that needs to be touched physically or where a service where people actually have to go, um, you have to figure out how to get that product to the people or how to get yourself to the people. So Diving into the first P, product or service, what, what kind of uh, topics and what kind of questions do we have to answer there so that we can define this product and service? You can see again, uh, lots of questions here and uh, to uh, you know sum this up, it's about functionality, quality, packaging, brand again, service, support, warranty. All of these questions, um, are associated with the first P that stands for product. Some of them already familiar, what you know, needs do we satisfy? What uh, problem do we solve? But then it's getting into features and uh, how customers are interacting with the product or service. What is not so obvious from the beginning is that it's about size and colors and so, and so on. Uh, does it need to be packaged? You know, is there a brand? And how is it different compared to other competitors? What's the cost? Of course, here when you define a product, all of the questions around, you know, can you be profitable in the sense of, you know, can you cover your costs and have some economic backflow as well? Second P that I'm jumping into here, right, is about the price. And that's not so um, obvious here again, but there is lots of questions around, you know, discounts and financing and, and not just, you know, how to set the price. 
um, it's also about understanding um, the price sensitivity of a customer, meaning that you know if you increase the price, uh, will your customer still buy it or will they stop buying? Um, if you lower the price, you know the same questions arise. How can you um, incentivize people with discounts maybe for business to business customers or specific people? Or again, how you compare with your price uh, to your competitors? Place, as I said, is all about location, logistics, distribution, of course, all the digital um, ways of delivering products and services sits to your customers is also in this category. Main point here is also, you know, you need a sales force. Do you have sales people that actually need to go somewhere or is it all working digitally? Very important uh, point these days. Again, how do your competitors do that? Can we learn from that? Can you make it different? Uh, then how they do it, and can you be unique in that way? And where, of course, do um, your customers find you even? Do they know where to go if they want to buy something from you? One more P for promotion. This is actually the heart of you know, the communication services or the communication that you actually undertake to talk to your customers. So it's about advertising, public relations, uh, creating messages, um, supporting sales uh, with those texts and videos and media um, to communicate to that target market. You know, all the traditional, you know, old school ways of, uh, you know, promotion fall into this category, like um, advertising in, in uh, newspapers, on radio, in the TV, or even on billboards, which is becoming uh, quite trendy again. What is the best time, you know, with all the technology around, we know that when you have to uh, publish a post so that more and more people see it than on another, uh, point in time during the day maybe. And again, we are comparing to our competitors. How do they do that? Um, much easier today to find out and to research how our competitors are doing that because so much is online. That was the four. And uh, as you can imagine, I'm always coming with something, you know, an extension to that concept. And uh, it's actually the seven P's if you go into marketing of services, you know. Um, we were until now more focusing on the product with the four P's, but now we are extending it with three more when we think of um, services. So selling a service. And uh, the fifth P here stands for people. And this year, you know, are not only the sales people, but people may be delivering uh, that service, um, implementing the service on your customers, maybe a haircut person. So it's about these people that come into contact with your customer. The next P stands for process. So actually what kind of processes are involved for you to deliver this service? And uh, how do the, the people, not only your own people, but also the customers interact or behave in this process? A very important P to think about. And the seventh P is standing for physical evidence. So it's like when you're performing a service on someone, um, there's actually nothing to touch. There's nothing that says, well, you have performed that service. What's the before and after? And um, that's what this P is standing for. How can you make something that is actually intangible, tangible, and you know, be able to be noticed and perceived by the people that you have served? And now I'm jumping into another extension actually, um, 
that's the 8P and it's standing for philosophy. And it's that, you know, ethical moral framework uh, that is this underlying philosophy of, of maybe the, the purpose and the ethos of, of the company that you are creating or that organization that you are supporting that is connecting you um, with your customers. Yeah, here it's uh, the point to say thank you for listening to that um, core concept about what the marketing co concept actually is about. Four Ps, seven Ps, and then eight Ps. So uh, again, my call to action for you, write down the thoughts that you had in the last couple of minutes and the questions that came up in context of these topics that we now touched uh, in connection to the idea that you are working upon. See you on the other side.